हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द चैनल यूपीएससी एनडीए सीडीएस सक्सेस फोरम सो हियर आई वुड लाइक टू मेंशन इट कैटेगोरिकली दैट इन माय प्रीवियस टू वीडियोस आई डिड डिस्कस अबाउट द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट्स द प्रोसीजर ऑफ द अमेंडमेंट ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन नाउ इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द वेरियस क्वेश्चन दैट हैड अपियर्ड इन द प्रीवियस एन एग्जामिनेशन now as i discussed with you the amendment procedure of the constitution in india is given as per the article 368 part 20 of the indian constitution now so far we have made more than hundreds of amendments in the constitution but what are the important amendments and these am related to these amendments the question are are being asked in the nda examination cds examination now let's see what were the previous year questions that had come in nda examination related to the topic especially the constitutional amendment now the question is which of the following directive principles was inserted by the constitution as per the 42nd amendment act 1976 here i would like to make it very clear to you the 42nd amendment of the constitution it is known as the mini constitution because during this amendment act several changes were made in the constitution of india and this is the most important amendment that was carried out in the year 1976 wherein the emergency it was imposed in the country on 25th june 1975 until the next elections were held so the country was facing the phase of emergency as per the article 352 of the indian constitution now here the question is which one of the following directive principles now here i would like to add up some more points directive principles are the guidelines which are given to the state government and the central government that they should follow it letter and spirit but it is non justiciable in nature but it is expected that the governments who are sitting there at the state government or the central government must follow these guidelines or the directive policies the concept or the procedure of the directive policy is borrowed from the irish constitution that is the constitution of ireland now here the correct option is equal justice and free legal aid but try to understand it why the answer is marked here as equal justice and free legal aid because there are certain sections of the society who are very poor they cannot afford the legal fees or the fees that is charged by the advocates and the council under that circumstances in order to do justice with these people the poor people the lowest rung of the society the government has made the arrangement that such poor people should be provided with the free legal aid so that there should not be any hindrance in getting justice for these people so the correct option the directive principles which was inserted as per the 42nd amendment of the indian constitution this is a very important amendment of the indian constitution 44th amendment 42nd amendment 86th amendment 93rd amendment these are all the important amendments of the indian constitution so if at all the question is repeated your answer should be equal justice and free legal aid that was added into the constitution of india as per the 42nd amendment and that too under the article that is 51a that is directive principles of the state policy the next question the word socialist again the question as i told you generally the questions are asked related to the amendment of the constitution and wherein the major amendments had taken place the 42nd amendment it is known as the mini constitution of india mini constitution 
because several new things were added into the constitution of India. Now here the word socialist. Now you could see it, the word socialist, it was inserted into the preamble. Now preamble of the constitution, it is again, it cannot be altered. It is the basic structure of the Indian constitution. As per the 42nd amendment, the socialist, secular, unity and integrity, these words were added into the preamble of the Indian constitution. I repeat, the word socialist, secular, unity and integrity, these were the words which were added into the preamble of the Indian constitution as per the 42nd amendment act of the Indian constitution. Earlier it was not there. Earlier it was not there. Now let me repeat the history. The preamble of the Indian constitution, it cannot be altered. However, new words can be added. But in the year 19, uh, this thing, 1976, when the 42nd amendment it was carried out, these two words were added into the constitution of India, socialist, secular, unity and integrity. So the correct option is 42nd amendment act 1976. Let's move on to the next question. Now match the list. I told you the amendments of the Indian constitution is a very important aspect. 52nd Amendment of the Indian Constitution. Disqualification on grounds of defection. Now this is a very big topic, that anti-defection law. It was introduced in the Parliament of the Indian Constitution. Accordingly, when Rajiv Gandhi was the Prime Minister of India, anti-defection bill, it was introduced in the Parliament, wherein, suppose a particular MLA or member MLA or the member of parliament, they are elected on the ticket of a particular party. But if they feel that I should change the party, it is not possible. They will have to take a stand that wherein one third they should be, they should resign or they should uh, join the whole lot of party. There is, a, there is a big topic which I shall be discussing it later on. But 52nd amendment act deals with the disqualification on the grounds of defection. Defection means you leave that particular party on which you are on which you are elected. But in case now there is a provision as per this amendment act, if at all you want to join, suppose you are elected on the ticket of the Congress party and you wish to join with the Bharatiya Janta party, the first and foremost thing that concerned MLA or MP, he should resign from the present post of MLA or ML, MP and then only he should join because he is disqualified if at all solely he resigns, solely he joins the party that is not ac acceptable. And this amendment it was done as per the 40, 52nd amendment act 1985. Now 73rd amendment, 73rd amendment again it is a very important amendment that was carried out by the act of parliament and it stands for the Panchayat Raj system. Panchayat Raj system is basically the decentralization of power. We have got the federal structure in our country. The concept of federalism, it is borrowed from the Canadian constitution with the strong center. But at the same time, in order to decentralize the power and to make, to to ensure that the local people, the village people, they join in the democratic setup. The Panchayat Raj bill, it was introduced and wherein it was made mandatory that one third seats are reserved for women. The Panchayat Raj system, it is based on the recommendations of the Balwantrai Mehta committee, wherein the three levels of the government are instituted, that is at the lowest level, Gram Panchayat, Block level, Panchayat Samiti, then District level, Jilla Parishad. This three tier of administration, it is called as the Panchayat Raj system and it was introduced in the country, throughout the country 
as per the 73rd amendment act 1992 wherein sc sts obcs and the women they are given the reservation with the intention that their participation in the democratic setup is ensured so 73rd amendment make it a point that it stands for the decentralization of power and that to the bifurcation of power at the village level that is gram panchayat block level panchayat samiti district level jilla parishad now the next one is 61st amendment 61st amendment act 1988 again earlier till 1988 the person who has attained the age of 21 only he was eligible to cast his vote what we call it as the franchise right so the as per the 61st amendment act 1988 the voting age was reduced from 21 to 18 and now the person irrespective of his caste color creed culture whatever it may be if he has attained the age of 18 he is entitled to cast his vote for gram panchayat nagar parishad jilla parishad state government election mps and so on or whichever elections are held publicly for which they are eligible to cast their vote the next one is 86th amendment act 2006 right to education the children from 6 to 14 it is the fundamental right that is given to the children that they are entitled to get the education up to the age of 14 years this amendment act it is the 86th amendment act. whatever questions it had asked in the examination previous examination these are the important amendments that were carried out by the parliament already i told you in my previous video that parliament has the power to amend the constitution the state government they cannot make the amendments in the constitution the next question that this was probably earlier also i had discussed article 368 part 20 of the indian constitution article 368 part 20 of the indian constitution it deals with the power of parliament of india to amend the constitution it is the discretionary power it is the sole power given to the parliament of india that parliament alone can make the amendments in the constitution and that provision is given as per the article 368 part 20 of the indian constitution next amendment again the question was repeated you see the word secular was inserted into the constitution of india by 42nd amendment I already i told you 42nd amendment it is known as the mini constitution of india so the word secular simple simple questions are being asked so so far we have made 110 amendments in the constitution all this you need not study only the important one if you focus on it you will find that attempting the questions on the amendment of the indian constitution is a very easy task the next one point out the difference between the local government in india before and after nine after the constitutional amendment 1992 what amendment was made it has become mandatory now in 1992 as already discussed that we have decentralized the power with the local government local self government that too whenever this election now remember one thing the elections for jilla parishad gram panchayat nagar parishad municipal corporation it is the duty of the state election commission to conduct the election but as per this amendment act 93 as per this amendment act in the year 1992 it is made mandatory that regular regular election must be held to the local government bodies now what are these local government bodies gram panchayat panchayat samiti jilla parishad nagar parishad municipal corporation these are the local bodies and as per this amendment act it is mandatory it is compulsory it is obligatory on the part of the state election commission 
that the regular elections are held after every five years. Apart from that, one third seats are reserved for women. One third seats are reserved for women from where this, uh, the election is held for Gram Panchayat, Panchayat Samiti, Jilla Parishad, Nagar Parishad or the Municipal Corporation. The third option is not a correct one. Elected officials exercise supreme power in the government. No, this is not the correct. The first and second one, it is the correct option only as far as the Amendment Act in 1992 is concerned, giving powers to the local body. The next one is again 93rd Amendment Act. 93rd Amendment Act deals with the extension of reservation in educational institution. Previously, I tell you, now in CBSE school or ICSE board school, only the students belonging to the affluent family, they could only take the admission. But now since the government has made it mandatory, Right to Education Act, and apart from that, as per the 93rd Amendment Act, they have given extended reservation in educational institution. What does it mean? That means, suppose there is a CBSE school in your area and 100 students are admitted in class 1, standard first. Out of that 100 seat, 25 seats shall be reserved for SC, ST, OBC, economically weaker section, the girls and whatever fees that is being charged by the private CBSE school, that fees shall be reimbursed by this concerned state government and that reimbursement it is done. This was the act which was passed by as per the 93rd Amendment Act and it deals with the extension of reservation of in educational institution for the SC, STs, OBCs and the weaker sex, economically weaker sections of the society. They are given, the poor children are given the admission in the reputed school which are managed by the, this thing, which are affiliated with the CBSE or English medium schools, whatever it may be, they shall be given seats and their payment of fees shall be made by the government. This was the amendment act which was carried out. The next one, one is, which one of the following constitutional amendment have added article 51.15.5 in the constitution of India providing reservation in educational institution? in private sector 93rd amendment just now uh, just now it is discussed and the article 15.5 is added article 15.5 is added in the constitution of india by giving reservation to the poorer sections of the society discarded sections of the society where they do not have the capacity to pay the fees of the private school then the government has made the provisions for such children in the school now I hope the questions which were asked in the previous NDA examination, right? The questions which were asked in the previous NDA examination related to the constitutional amendments are very clear to you. And I would suggest in the my next video, I shall be discussing the various questions related to the constitutional amendment that were asked in the CDS examination. So you get the clear cut idea what are the important amendments that you need to revise, that you need to learn, that you need to understand. I hope these questions will help you a lot, giving you the idea about what are the basic amendments of the Indian constitution, what exactly is the amendment of the constitution. If you like it, do share it, watch it, subscribe it. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thanks a lot.